Hello, my name is Gavin Carter, and today I'm going to be giving you guys a slideshow on the technical information of becoming an active duty police officer. So what is an active duty police officer? Uh, most of the time when we think of an active duty police officer, we think of somebody cruising down the street in a cop car with a badge and a gun. And that is exactly what it is. Um, active duty police officers enforce the laws in their jurisdiction and that can include arresting, detaining, and collecting evidence against criminals. And then the other side of it is protecting and serving the community. So this could be um, community service, um, helping out with you know certain problems that might be going on in the community, um, and basically just protecting and serving the community. So my thesis uh, for my essay was, when considering law enforcement as your profession, it is important to do your research and understand the pathway you must take to become an officer, including required information, ethical and moral standards, and the ability to deal with critical issues related to policing in America. So being a police officer is a tough job. There's a lot of things that go with policing that are not easy to deal with. Um, for one, you are putting your life on the line every time that you go on duty. So when you're considering law enforcement as a profession, it's important to understand your role and your responsibilities and to really think about if you're able to fulfill those roles and um, because if you aren't able to fulfill those roles, you could be jeopardizing somebody's life in some circumstances. So it's just important to do your research and really think about whether you're uh, able and fit to become a police officer. So what is what are some of the things that uh, are required for police officers? So in the rest of the slideshow, we will discuss the technical and reading, technical reading and writing requirements, laws and regulations that govern police, the education level that's required, and then the ethical codes and conduct that you must follow as well as some critical issues that police officers face in America today. Reading and writing. So the educational or technical reading and writing, the um, technical and reading, reading and writing within police officers is pretty simple. Um, you need to be able to read and write at the level of a high school graduate. Um, you also, the reason that you need to be able to do this is because you're gonna be creating reports um, of events that happen. Um, one thing that is to be noted about creating writing reports and policing is that most of the time you are doing your reports is under a huge amount of stress. So you could have a shooting or something like that happen, an arrest where somebody resists and you have to chase them, uh, things like that. Adrenaline's high and you might forget a few key details, key details. So it's important that you're able to read and write and recall these information, call, recall the information, put it in chronological order it, with as much detail as possible to ensure the proper processing of a criminal or somebody that needs to be reported. Um, you also need to be able to read new laws and regulations that are being put into place. So within policing, there's always new laws being created and you need to be able to read those laws, new policies that your uh, your department might release and process them, internalize them and be able to then use them in your line of work. Some of the laws and regulations that govern police officers are at the federal and state, federal, state and local levels. So we have the federal laws such as the Constitution. Um, it's kind of like a, what is described to us in uh, criminal justice is a funnel. So at the very top you have your federal laws and then it gets smaller, you go down to your state laws. Um, there's a lot of state laws that are different state to state. So it's important when you're a police officer that you know your state laws. 
And then there's local laws and the regulations. So each police department has their own set of uh, codes and regulations that you might have to follow. So it's important to be able to know those. And then the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights is a pretty important piece of information to know when you're in policing. The Bill of Rights basically is there to protect citizens from unjust um, policing and unjust um, unjust jury trials. There's a lot of things that go with the Bill of Rights. So there's the right to remain silent. Um, there's the right to bear arms. There's a right to freedom of press. You can record what you want in public. You can say what you want in public. You can assemble to protest. There's quite a few things with the Bill of Rights that uh, law enforcement needs to know and be able to not only enforce, but protect people's rights through policing. And then education levels for policing. So there is pretty low standards for uh, a common on-duty patrol officer. Um, usually what's required is a high school diploma or a GED equivalent. And these can vary from department to, to department. So if somebody is gonna be working in the FBI or at Border Patrol, there could be less or more stringent, stringent uh, regulations as far as education. Um, post. Post is um, basically boot camp that you would go to um, where you're tested educationally, physically, mentally, psychologically, um, and basically you learn how to become a police officer as well as you're tested on your knowledge to ensure that police officers are competent enough to actually patrol and have the um, power that police officers have. And then college degrees. So most departments don't require that you have a college degree, but if you have a college degree, it is a lot easier for you to be um, hired. And then from there, it is a lot easier for you to climb the ladder in a sense. So getting job promotions to where you're actually managing other police officers when you're coming forward to a hiring committee, committee, they want to hire somebody that's well-educated and knows what they're going to be doing when it comes to um, regulating other police officers. So having a college degree in the subject of criminal justice is something that is very helpful, but it's not required. Um, ethical codes of conduct. Federal, state, and local codes are all things that um, police officers must follow. Some cities have different codes uh, and different uh, regulations as far as police officers go. Um, there is the codes of conduct, there's the ethic codes, and these all these codes basically uh, may, wanna make sure that police officers are uh, brave, and, and put themselves forward in the community and um, that they are ethical at all times, you know, and, and regard people the same. So when, you, when you're arresting somebody or uh, patrolling, that you are always ethical um, regarding to people in the, as the same, not giving a bias and and, and being rude or, or being uh, extra stringent, stringent to some people and less stringent and, and lenient on other people. Um, most of the critical issues are seen on the newspaper or seen in the news and social media. Racism is a big critical issue with policing. There seems to be a conflict um, throughout America with racism and policing. And then the use of force continuum. This is one of the biggest issues that we face in policing. The use of force continuum is basically how you escalate to lethal force. So if you arrest somebody, they resist arrest, you, the next step in the continuum, the first step is speaking to them, the next step is physical force. And if they're trying to weigh, run away, there's less than lethal force. But if somebody pulls a gun on you, 
then you have to escalate the situation to lethal force. Same goes for if somebody has a gun and they are in a school or they are approaching a public place, you must use lethal force because other lives are at stake. You have a responsibility to protect the community and put yourself forward into positions where you might be at risk. In conclusion, policing has a lot of responsibilities with little to no compensation. There are rewards, there are benefits um, as far as um, you know, insurance, you get paid well, but there are a lot of things as far as your portrayal in the news that could be a negative effect on you. You know, there's a lot of stress that goes into being a police officer. A lot of, you see a lot of terrible things. There's a lot of PTSD that is very common in police officers. So many responsibilities with little to no compensation is something that you want. If you want to be a police officer, you have to consider the fact that you might not be, you might not be compensated the way you want to be. Here's my work cited.